The Senate Armed Services Committee's fiscal 2022 defense policy bill slapped down some of the U.S. Air Force's plans to retire legacy aircraft, mandating that the service retain the venerable A-10 Warthog. The bill, approved by the committee on Wednesday, did permit some aircraft divestments. Most notably, it would allow for the retirement of 18 KC-135 aircraft and 12 KC-10 aircraft, enabling the continued bed-down of the KC-46. However, the committee's version of the National Defense Authorization Act sends a message that lawmakers have not been wholly persuaded by Air Force officials' arguments to mothball a portion of the fleet to free up money for cutting-edge aircraft still in development, such as the B-21 Raider and Next Generation Air Dominance Program, and will seek to balance risk by retaining certain airframes. Over the past decade, the service has attempted to divest some or all of its remaining 281A-10 Warthog attack planes, which have flown close air support missions for ground troops since the late 1970s. The United States recently carried out airstrikes as it backed the Afghan army's bid to repel a Taliban offensive, the Pentagon said Thursday, with the withdrawal of international forces from the country all but complete. In the last several days, we have acted through airstrikes to support the ANDSF, said Pentagon spokesman John Kirby, referring to Afghan government forces. We continue to conduct airstrikes in support of the ANDSF, he told reporters at a press briefing, adding that head of the U.S. Army Central Command, CENTCOM, General Kenneth McKenzie, had authorized the strike. U.S. air power has long provided Afghan forces with a tactical advantage against the Taliban, one that many fear will be eroded by the withdrawal of international troops, though Afghanistan's own fledgling air force is flying into the breach. The Tempest project has been given an amber-red rating by the Infrastructure Project Authority, warning more funding is required or there could be a delay in the aircraft entering service. According to the 2021 Annual Report on the Government Major Projects Portfolio, from the Infrastructure and Projects Authority, which can be found here, Tempest is categorized with a level of risk. The level of investment was significantly less than required, however it preserves the feasibility of the program within current parameters, but adds significant overall program risk, particularly to the assumed date for initial operating capability. The concept and assessment phase will provide the evidence for program viability, including level of additional investment and or other options for the provision of combat air. Investments and milestones beyond this phase are subject to a margin of error in terms of time, cost and performance that will be refined prior to the next decision gate. Blackbird, good hit, good hit. The voice of a number 75 squadron FA-18 Hornet pilot echoes out from the radio held by an Australian Army Joint Terminal Attack Controller, JTAC, as a cloud of smoke billows on the horizon. Target destroyed. Mission successful. The two Hornets roar overhead and leave the box, having dropped two MK-82 500-pounds bombs. It was another job well done for the Australian and New Zealand Defence Force, NZDF, JTACs in the Air Weapons Tower. JTACs from Australia, the United States and New Zealand have been working together at the Townsville Field Training Area coordinating aircraft dropping live munitions on exercise Talisman Sabre 21, TS-21. The manager for the NZDF JTAC program is Major Jeff Kendot as a small but capable force it's important that we do a lot of training with our partner nations, Major Jeff Kent said. The federal government is implementing special immigration measures to extract Afghan nationals engaged with the Canadian embassy, their families and those who help Canadian military on the front lines, as the Taliban continues to gain ground there. In a joint press conference, Defence Minister Harjit Sajjan, Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Garneau and Immigration Minister Marco Mendocino said, as time is of the essence to resettle these individuals, they expect arrivals into Canada very shortly. We will not leave them behind lives hang in the balance here, which is why we are taking timely and decisive action. Canada will do right by those who did right by us Mendocino told reporters on Friday.